All right, go ahead and come on in and find your seats. All right, Nuoman, right? Yes. Nuoman is here to talk about how APIs empower open banking. And you started your career in capital risk and worked in a lot of areas of the bank, mm -hmm. uh, including architecture and anti-fraud and uh, crypto, crypto card. Yeah. And you are now the CIO of Fron Finance. Yes. And yeah, here to, here to tell us all about APIs empowering open banking. So everyone welcome Nuoman. Good morning. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. My name is Norman Chakawi. I'm Chief Information Officer of From Finance, which is uh, a subsidiary of uh, Group State General. I am in charge of individual loans. I have been uh, worked in a lot of financial banks, in card management system, in uh, asset management, and some retail banks. I'm very happy to be here today. Thank you for your presence, and thank you for the invitation. I hope that you will uh, exchange uh, the feedback of front finance on API banking and also in the open banking uh, systems. I'm going to talk about API, uh, obviously, but not uh, only API, but uh, only uh, API on opinion on the, of banking. What is more important is not API, but the use of that you have to do with that. Uh, let's start by asking you a question. Who heard about open banking before or is using open banking services in the room? That sounds good. <laughs> it's more than 80%. We are living now in a historical transformation of the bank industry. This transformation is what led by some fintechs, uh, thankful to fintech and thankful to API, that pushing banks to have this transformation. Before to, I can, <laughs> some technology. We heard about what said, what Bill Gates said one, that uh, banking are necessary, banks are not. I think it's too hard. In order to understand what is the ecosystem now is changing, I, I, I remember that Brett King said that banking is no longer somewhere you go, but something you do. It is just because that is what is changing. Our parents uh, don't leave the same thing that us, but they are changing also. Because banking, uh, customer relationship, uh, fintechs, technology are moving a lot and a lot. And what's happened now is that the customer relationship is not the opportunity only for banks, but also for all the ecosystems. I will talk today about a lot of things. The first time that I, the first thing, I will explain you the ecosystem of open banking and what, what are the stakes that are facing banks and, uh, and financial institutions. After I will explain the roles that API and microservice have in this open architecture for tomorrow. And lastly, I will explain you the business model, the business operation model of foreign finance in this ecosystem. What is changing is a lot of things. I choose four things only. The first thing is the wave of regulatory requirements. We have faced since 2008 a great crisis, you remember all. What are doing the banks? They invest a lot to meet these requirements. All the investments was very important because it was firstly in the skills, secondly in the mainframe, in the old legacy, and the second time in the branch. And what's happened? That time that we push this investment in banks, fintechs were investing in technology, in innovation, in the uh, regulation. Uh, in the same thing, we are reviewing the customer relationship. That's why all the investment that we've done in this 20 years, it was investment that was uh, oriented by customer. That's why we create a gap. And this gap, that is a problem now, because we have to have a jump in banks and situation financial to have to keep catch this new customer. The second thing is bank and non-bank competitors. We have now a lot of fintechs, a lot of uh, uh, small companies that choose something, some product in order to invest in this product. That's why uh, there is difference from banks to invest in all the whole chain of this product. And that's why it's more important that FinTech continue this investment. 
The second part is technology innovation. We have a lot and a lot of new technology innovation. API, OK, that's new, but it's not really new because we, uh, when we do something in computer development, we know that API uh, is, was uh, a lot uh, uh, many years uh, before. But we are blockchain now because we have some, some comp smart contract that you are disintermediate clients. We have uh, electronic signature that's uh, not uh, not a lot developed now in some in some companies, but uh, we are something the new that we disintermediate clients. We have API first in our development, the big data, the cloud, and all what we know. The other thing that is more important is what you call at our any time, anywhere, any device. Client now we have all uh, with us smartphone. We have our bank there. I have to have a joke. Uh, last year we offered to my mom uh, a computer, and she said to me, Ah, thank you, son. I have to connect Wi-Fi. <laughs> I did not have Wi-Fi, mom. See, I have Wi-Fi because I see all the Wi-Fi in my own computer. This is it's not yours, it's our neighbor Wi-Fi. No, it's my home. No, okay, thank mom. <laughs> two, two days after, she has his account banking application. She do transfer and she give me money <laughs> in two days. The other, th the other thing that you have to, to think about that is that this ecosystem is transforming. It's transforming, and the gap that we have, uh, banks, we, we can't jump the, the, the stake, but we have a great problem, is that our legacy is more heavy. That's why there is a lot of strategy, and I will ask you some questions after. The other thing more important is data. Data is in the core business of the banks. There are too much of it, we have a lot of data, they are too expensive to have quality management in data. Why? Because when we work in asset management, for example, and we are buying some data from Bloomberg, it's quite expensive. Then you have to be sure that the quality of our data is good. And after that, we do this data to transfer some funds and others. There is too long to deliver. Why? Because when we take a data, there is a brute data. We have to collect the data, to manage data, and it takes time. If you want to use the data for online transaction, it's more difficult if the bad data is, is there. And this is too bad quality because we have a lot of data. As we are in a lot of systems, we cannot use the data before have some data management on that. And it is too complex. Because we say we have a lot of data and you can do a lot of things. It's not true. Because each time that we have data, we have some repository, we have data quality management, we have to assess something before to use the data directly. And we have a new ecosystem of open banking. In this roadmap, we see a lot of things. You have the incumbent banks, we have the new uh, generation of uh, uh, fintechs that is creating payment fintechs, credit insurance, agricultural, new banks. And we have all the API around that. But we have the challenger that's coming, Facebook, and Google, and others, they are coming. And the more important for this, for GAFA, it's not the banks, but the client and its data. That is more important. What's happened now is you have two things. You have the closing banking on the top of the slide, and you have the open banking. The first time, relationship is uh, concentrated with the client. The only canal to go to have a relation with clients is the agency. It's finished. We don't have no chance. Now what we have is a challenger, FinTech and GAFA, take a lot, a lot of part of the market, and the bank are only uh, provider of services. That's too, too light. And tomorrow, if you have Facebook, WhatsApp, Uber, uh, Alibaba, they are offering two things, services, banking services, and non-banking services that are pushing banks to be invisible in finance. That's why they are calling open API, services, and platform. What is tomorrow happen? There is a new business model. This business model will face traditional banks with the GAFA. And after that, we have a transfer of the opportunity and the value to the, from the website to the API. Because with the website, we have a product limited and we have a limited scope of clients. But when we are working with API, we can have a diversification of our client, diversification of our product, diversification of partner, and we can go ahead. That's why I said in the beginning that there's a lot of strategy on that to have some collaboration between fintechs. Some banks choose to buy some fintechs. Some banks choose to have some, some relationship, and some banks choose to develop itself some software uh, company. This is a little bit strategy. There is no one truth. The truth is that you have to choose bank by bank in which product we are strong 
We have to develop it. And which product we are not strong, we have to feed some client and some partnership. And in which technology we are not very mature, blockchain, for example, we cannot be uh, um, uh, strong in all the, the items. What happens is the role of the API now is changing. I, 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 I explain you something. We have some capacity business in the banks, and we have an open API. We can have some customers that they go further to have to, to have some uh, some uh, some services. But more important is that customers don't link directly by API. The most important is that they link apps. You have to develop apps, good apps with good product, with good data, and the API will only connect apps with people and not directly consumed. But why are APR are more important? I have five or three points. The first key is easy communication. We have some protocols, some standard protocols that is more important to have to share that. And you have some common style. We, we are looking about rest and specification. They are the tomorrow uh, framework that we are ha to have. Structured data type with the JSON XML. It is the base only. We cannot invent each time some, something. The most important also is controlling and authentication. And the last one is KPI. And we'll think just one minute for the KPI. Today, we have some well services, we have some connection directly, but we don't have any KPI. We don't know which consumer data is consumed, how many products is sold, how many person is connected. But tomorrow, with API management, for example, we can have some new KPIs that can uh, help us to monetize more and more our APIs because we can have some check in the connection, we can check which products are sold, we can uh, cancel some products because they are not sold, and it's very important tomorrow if you, have to, if you have to have some relationship with our customer and to centralize all our capacities on that. And they come to from finance uh, proposition of French open market. From finance has a, a, a stand up in the market in loans for corporate and for individuals. But what is more important is that we are uh, credit as service because we have a lot of kind of, of open banking. First one is credit as service, I will explain you. Second one is uh, credit as platform. And the third one is uh, credit as uh, marketplace. Our model is, is a mix of a mixed strategy between uh, launching the close relationship with our clients. The second time is uh, innovation because we own a lot in our product and we have our own software. But for something uh, like e-signature, for example, we are looking for some partners. We are looking for some fintechs. When we look for aggregators, for example, to aggregate clients, banking accounts, we are looking for another partner in order to have an ecosystem for uh, the clients in order to choose what is more important. The second time is a, a mixed model. We are not physically or digital, we are physical because we have some channels, some, some distribution, some commercial, but we are also digital. The more important for us is to be omni-channel. Uh, a client can start his credit in the agency, he can continue in web, and he can collapse with these with apps. The more important also, also is the know-how because we have a lot of partners. Our aim is to give this part of our experience to our partner. There is know-how is very important. There is no open banking, there is no API, but no personal no, uh, know-how personal. That's why uh, what we, we call know-how is all that we give to, our, give to our partner in order to share our experience on that. That's why we have uh, a chain of value, I will explain after. We have uh, merchants, we are e-commerce, we have open banking partner like uh, Orange, like uh, Covea and others. We have some fidelization of the HG clients and otherwise we have the direct. It's the B2C directly. And it's this part of, of scheme, we have a lot of model. B2C, business to consumer directly. We have B2B2C, business to business to consumer. We have B2B, business to business, but you have another model, it's B2B to B2C. <laughs> this is the platform. That is our model. It's like a Lego. What we build on, on that is that we have a chain of value of the credit. If each part of our uh, ecosystem is uh, individual and each client from banks, new banks, insurance and fintech can choose just the part that he wants. He wants scoring, I, we give scoring. He wants front back, we get front back. He wants only recovery, we have recovery. That's why we construct our system, the, uh, the entire win a business oriented and IT desolated. The dogma is between SaaS and, and on premise, we don't have any dogma. Like, uh, we have uh, also something which we call the uh, API, help us to, to have some offer services. This services is for the market in white, 
in white label, and each time that we have some partner that wants something, things we can go it. And for me, it's okay. Yes. All right. Anyone have questions for Noaman? Looks like Mark is ready again. Um, thanks for that. Um, yeah, the, so when I think about open banking, it's got to have like a couple of wins. Like there's an open banking <coughs> win for banks in that they get to modernize their business models and um, introduce new sort of innovation um, and approaches to um, income sources rather than the old bank system. Um, for fintech, it allows them to enter the market and compete competitively. Um, but then also the, for the consumers, there's, there should be increased, consumer, uh, increased choice and the opportunity to create wealth generation. So when you talk about KPIs and the benefits that APIs mm -hmm. create, with credit as a service, then are you measuring the KPIs as far as the end customer's ability to generate wealth um, and uh, better manage their uh, financial resources because of the services that are now available to them via the API. How do you measure that? Yes, there is, there is two benefits on that. The first one, obviously, we focus our intervention on business to business, but it's business to client. Now, with open banking, any client can choose a new mortgage to follow his uh, billing to choose that his investment, and he can choose the general for one product, BNP for another one, or HSBC. That is the value of the open banking, is that allow to the customers to have the right to choose what is the, the best for him. For the company, is the other thing, is to allow for companies to diversify their offer. For example, tomorrow, I'm, I'm not, I'm not have some mortgage, for example, in my capacity, in my ability to offer. I can look it for another bank to offer this opportunity. This is win-win from banks and from customers. That is the reality of banking. Other question? Looks like we have one way in the back. Hello, thank you for the presentation. I had a question about the relationship between the banks and the fintechs, because you were talking about whether mm. you should build partnership with them or buy them. Uh, but on the buying, aren't you afraid that you will break their business model? Mm. and they will lose their strength by integrating uh, larger companies like banks? Yes, this is a large debate. <laughs> this, what I said, that is a lot of strategy on that. Uh, some banks choose to buy some fintechs, but there's two models on that model. The first one is I buy the fintech, and I integrate this technology and I integrate skills. But if you impact this fintech with the governance of the banks, it's dead. They not live. But the more important is as to buy, for example, this fintech and to leave it to work like before. That is the most important for the bank, to have skills in the fintech, to have technology in the fintech, and not have all the governance of bank. But some banks do some mistakes on that because they integrate all, and three months after, there is no innovation. That is the, the, the whole mistake. The other uh, thing that we which is important that what we do, for example, in the general, we have buy um, a fintech which is called Trezor, for example. A Trezor is independent. He can work around, uh, look in some clients, and not integrated in our uh, whole uh, governance. That is more important. The other thing it's important is not only technology, but skills. Because some uh, young people, when we work in a, a fintech, they want to stay in the fintech, not to integrate a bank. That's, you have to allow them to keep uh, far from the banks and to work uh, independently. And this is a very, very huge uh, problem in order to be sure that the collaboration between fintechs and, and banks, it will be win-win. Uh, for example, in France, France side, for example, we don't buy any fintech. We are collaboration, it's win-win. We give technology. Last time, for example, I don't know if you know, we have a collaboration with a fintech which is called Yelon. Yelon has uh, constructed a chatbot 
uh, the robot advisor and they have a technology which works very well. Then we connect the chatbot of Yellow to our ecosystem. We don't integrate to, uh, to get it. And it's a successful story. And uh, we are very happy with this collaboration. All right, we have time for one more. <laughs> one that is question. you, right in the middle there. Hi, thank you for your insights. Um, you were talking about an ecosystem you were creating with the credit as a service. Yeah. What's the role of your company in this ecosystem? Are you the one providing the ecosystem or are you p participating in the ecosystem? Both of them. <laughs> and, yeah. Yes, I will explain. Okay. Uh, firstly, when we, we set up uh, 30 years ago uh, the ecosystem of France Finance, we are offering credit. Okay? Some new companies, like Neobank, for example, have a banking license. The banking license is different from the credit license. If you have to provide credit to customers, we have to go to two licenses. And this is very huge because there is a lot of requirement on that. What's happened is that some new banks contact us, they say, okay, I am a new new bank, I want to offer credit to my customers, but I don't have license. Can you provide me the service in white market? Because you don't show that it is for often it's behind. We go it and we are participating in this ecosystem by offering our credit to our partner. Other time, perhaps sometimes we say that we have another subsidiary of another green group. He said, I don't want your ecosystem, I want only the scoring because you have 13 years ago uh, created the, the subsidiary, we have a lot of data, we have only scoring. We give the scoring. That is why we are participating on that directly for on, on white market. On the other side, we are using uh, some capabilities of the market in order to offer other service. For example, when I say that we have a signature in our contract, we have doing a partnership with uh, Edemia, for example, with Neo Neteos, which is a fintech that offers uh, us the module that's going that. That is what we are moving the market in order to look for some other capabilities in order to integrate in our offer and offer that to the market. That's why we are in both uh, market white blonde, um, white uh, market, white, uh, and another side we are integrating some new technology. Lights, we, I don't know if you want, for example, aggregators, we, we work on part aggregators. We want to offer a new service to our client. What is the new service? We say that uh, we are all in one, two, or three uh, bank accounts. When you have to do credit, we have only one account. What we offer is to have an overview on you, all your accounts by aggregator. And we, s we use uh, the aggregator that Borsoama has acquired, uh, acquired uh, two years or three years ago. And we give this possibility to our client to have overview of all the accounts of the client. That's why we can offer uh, a credit, but uh, an overview of solvability. This is a service that we are looking for the market. We are going to our platform and we offer to our clients. Okay, for you. Thank you. All right, another round of applause for Noman. Thank you.